Now I'm going to talk about the vehicle loadout, and I'm just going to give you a brief little explanation of them all before we start getting into greater details. So, the really two slots you're going to use in this one are fire suppression and anchor mode, depending on what build you're running. For the Prowler, there's two builds, the Siege build and what people call on the PC the Bruce Lee build, which is pretty much just like a shotgun build. Next for this one, Racer is ultimately the best one to use. It's just better all the way around. I mean, some people might think Rival, but Racer is better. Rival is good in certain scenarios, but Racers is better generally. And for these ones, personally, I think front armor and top armor are pretty much useless. Side armor is better, but don't waste... Well, you can waste 100 certs. There's only 100 certs. And then that's it. So you can because pretty much you'll have two sides that can take like that can take like just one more extra rocket pretty much, but I don't I think that's just pretty much useless. Mine guard's okay, but it's only useful when you, if you just hit mines. I mean you could be running all these three right here, which are pretty much useful all the time. Well you could say nanite's only useful when you get damage, but you're gonna get damaged constantly from stupid crap. But this is only useful when you hit mines, and even then it doesn't help out that much because four mines brings you down to half health, and then four more will just kill you. So, and even then you shouldn't be driving on roads anyway. If you, if you do have to drive on roads, have somebody else go in front of you or just try to find a different fight. Proximity radar is extremely useful for prowlers. Very useful, and I'll even show you a little clip later on. So... Here's the reason why proximity radar is awesome. I have my volunteer over there, Mr. Skittles man, and if he jets over, if he uses jets towards me and runs towards me, I'll be able to see him on my radar. Go at it, Mr. Skittles man. And as you can see, that's why proximity radar is awesome. But it does have one, one very bad weakness. And that's if they are crouch walking to you, they will not show up, as my volunteer will demonstrate now. So as you can see, you know, you deploy, you're just hammering away at this flash. And, oh look, I'm c 4 I'm dead. Yeah, it's, it's pretty useful. I like it best for per hours, because when you deploy, you can see stuff that's coming. Bear in mind, it is like a bubble. It's a 50 meter bubble. So, just keep that in mind. If something's too high up, you won't see it. The vehicle stealth is extremely useful for when you're doing the Bruce Lee build. And it allows you to pretty much just sneak around enemy armor, deploy. It's pretty good, but everybody knows vehicle stealth is good. Nanite repair, I think it's only useful if you're lazy, but even then you should just get out and repair. If you're running solo, that's about it. Only unless if you're like a solo player, then you should run run nanite repair. But I just think that's the lazy that's the lazy way out. Lastly, is the weapons that you will be using. Heat is pretty much useless unless if you just feel like killing infantry. The reason why I say it's useless is because due to the prowler, which I'll talk about in more detail later on about the prowler. But due to the prowler having two barrels, that means we do half damage. So, the only way you can kill infantry is if you direct impact with them with this. Unless you hit them twice with the splash damage and they die. It's really fun though if you deploy somewhere on a hill and you just fire away into the base, but that's the only time it's useful. Heat is quite good when you're starting off, actually. It's, it's quite good. Good splash damage, good against armor. But ultimately, you want to be using AP. AP is just the best way, really. Because once you get really good with it, you can just direct impact infantry, which is amazing. I've It's kind of easy. Once you do it enough, you eventually just get used to it. And it allows you to pull off some pretty insane, insane stuff. Alright, so pretty much the only weapons you will be using is the Marauder, the Gatekeeper, the Vulcan, and the Halberd. Maybe the walker if you're soloing, prowling. 
that's up to you. The Marauder, I just don't like it that much. And it's not that good. It is very good against anti-infantry, but the problem is every time you fire, it just kicks up, so it has really high recoil, so you can't be too far away. It's better than... It's pretty good. It's pretty good, but you won't be using it for any of the builds I'll be telling you about. Gatekeeper is amazing. It's very user-friendly, since it's extremely easy to use. It's quite powerful. It has been... No recoil, pretty much, from what I can tell. And it's very good. It, it fits the far away sniping build quite a bit. The Vulcan, as we all know, is amazing. You'll be using it for the Bruce Lee build. It's very, very powerful. And if you're going to kill infantry with it, you go in third person, because it's easier to hit them than using the circle. And lastly, this is, in my opinion, is the best anti-vehicle weapon all around. The reason why I say it's better than the Gatekeeper, if you're long range, because the Gatekeeper, you pretty much have to hit like almost all your shots to do the max amount of damage, but this thing is just one shot. And if you get very good with this, you will become amazing. And it one hits infantry, which you can do quite easily once you get used to it. And it's quite amazing. I personally think this is the best one to use for long ranging. But it's up to your gunner and up to you. So like I said, this is very user friendly. Anybody can use it. This is very skill based. And if you have to put it in the right hands, you can just dominate. And these, don't really put these on it. They're just a waste. Okay, for top gunners though, this is a bit different. You want your turn sensitivity cranked up really high, as you can see right here, but if you want it even higher, you can crank up your infantry sensitivity, which is kind of weird, and it will make it really, really fast. It's almost too fast. Now, this is only for top gunners, because when you want to be looking around the tank at all times, looking for threats, and you want to be able to engage them pretty fastly. Um, you don't want it. You don't want it too high for certain weapons, and this is pretty funny. If you're turning it too fast, it does like some weird. I don't know. It just like glitches out. But yeah, if you're using like a hybrid or gatekeeper, you don't want your sensitivity too high. Okay, so let's start off with the power stats. So everything in this ga game has some sort of armor resistance, whether that be ESFs, liberators, flashes. Everything has some sort of armor resistance. So for prowlers, 63% front, side and top are 58%, rear and underside are 30%, and that, the Mag Rider has the same armor, armor resistance. And the Vanguard has 68% up front, side and top are 65%, and rear and underside are 30%. So getting hit from behind hurts a lot. Now... All main battle tanks have 4,000 health, which is pretty nice. And since the prowler, since we have two barrels, we do have damage. An example is, let's take AP shells. Individually, that means one shot from a barrel will do 625 damage. So if both shots hit, you deal 1,250 damage, which is why we can't one-shot ESFs. Uh, Mag Riders kind of can, but they set them on fire. Vanguards definitely will one-shot them. Now, the information I'm about to give you isn't 100% exact because I couldn't find the information on the wiki or other sources, so this is just from using other people's prowlers and who have maxed out reload speed on AP and also maxed out anchor mode. So, the reload, as I've been able to tell, it's somewhere between 1 second and 1.5. So, since we, only, since we deal like low damage, however, if we are in anchored mode state, we can out DPS threats very effectively. Also, of how fast our bolts travel, they just won't know it's hitting them until it's too late. So let's take a Vanguard, for example. A Vanguard can deal 2,075 damage with AP, and on upgraded reload speed, it takes 4 seconds for that thing to reload. So in 4 seconds, if all shots hit the target, assuming if our speed's like 1.2, then we can deal 5,000 damage. Now, if you want to take into effect how long it takes for the bullets to travel and also if if, if our speed is 1.5 
then most likely in four seconds it won't be exactly 5,000 damage. However, though, by the time the Vanguard's AP shell is reloaded and ready to be fired again, his health will almost be completely gone, which is very effective. But it also means the power is only useful when it's in a deployed state. And you also have to take into effect, getting into a deploy state takes about 3 seconds. So you want to almost always engage your targets when you're deployed. If you just charge up to a, a prower, you will hit the prow or not a prower, a vanguard. A vanguard will almost always win that fight. Due to his shield, his high damage, and since you're only useful when you're deployed. Same thing with a mag rider. A mag rider will be able to outmaneuver you, get to your flanks, and kill you. So you want to engage your targets either at medium or long range, not too far away though, because they might be able to move away from your shots. However, all that being said, that's if you're using the Siege Sniper Tank build, which I will be talking about the two types of builds very shortly. But if you're using the Bruce Lee build, then kind of ignore all that, because the Bruce Lee build is very much made for being up close and personal, which I'll also be mentioning that very shortly. A nice little side note is a vanilla Prowler is still faster than a vanilla Va Vanguard and a vanilla Mag Rider. So we really are extremely fast. Now, with Racer Chassis maxed out, this allows you to do a power slide. And it allows you to keep your front towards the enemy while maneuvering to its flanks. It's, it's kind of weird to explain it any better. You just have to see it, and it's really cool to do. Last benefit it provides is it allows a quick buildup of speed to get out of risky spots and even climb up terrain that is impossible to do with other vehicles. All this being said, in my opinion, Racer is better, and the only real benefit that Rival Chassis gives you is you just turn the tank faster. The reverse speed it provides, it only maxes out at 32 miles, so Racer is just better to have. Unless you like Rival, but at least give Racer a try. It gives you more benefits than these. Now, there's two types of builds for the Prowler tank that many people use. The first one that a lot of people use, the common one, is the Siege Sniper tank. For this build, you work best in a group and sticking with other Prowlers. You want AP, and your secondary weapon is either the Gatekeeper or a Halberd. It's up to your gunner and it's up to you. Work, both work fantastic for this build, it's just ultimately up to you and your gunner. Now, for the utility slot, you want Anchor mode, obviously. You want that pretty close to being maxed out. Next for performance, Racer, unless you like Rival, but as I've said before, Racer gives you more benefits. Now for the defense, it's completely up to you. The best one to use that benefits this build the most are Proximity Radar, Stealth, or Nano Auto Repair. Personally, I'll go with Proximity Radar, but it's completely up to you. It depends on how you use this build. Now, how to use this build, it's ultimately up to you. You can either stay far away bombarding the enemy vehicles or flanking them on the side or behind to destroy them fast. If you're running stealth, you can flank them more easier and get a bit closer, and the closer you are, you can shred through the enemy armor, but it's more risky. Never be alone for too long or stay in the same spot. Treat this like sniping as an infantry. Fire a couple times and check your surroundings or move. The more you stay on the top of that hill, it all it takes is somebody with a Valkyrie to come out and see for you. That's all it takes. If you're in a group and have an amazing position, they're just constantly pulling armor and you just keep killing them, then put up a couple Spitfire turrets and tank mines to secure it even more. With Racer, this allows you to move to a new position fast and adapt to where the enemy is moving. The build is amazing at stopping an armor zerg. So pretty much an example is they're capping a base and you know it's going get, to get lost in like 30 seconds. Just fall back, find a good spot set up a sniper perch, and fire away at the clueless armor. Due to console having a limited render distance, this isn't as effective as it is in PC, where prowlers can be extremely far away. Now, the reason why I say radar is nice, because it allows you to see those pesky C4 fairies coming up to you when you're in your weakest state, deployed. That's when you're, that's when you're just a sitting duck, pretty much. So that's why I like proximity radar for this build. But it's all up to you. Okay, the next build is the Bruce Lee and Shotgun build. For this build, you want AP Shells, the Vulcan, next Fire Suppression, then Racer, then you need Max Stealth Stealth. 
This build is a very high risk and high reward one. It mainly focuses on the Vulcan's power. Since the Vulcan is very good on a harasser, then putting it on a speedy tank with more health and with more firepower thanks from, from the AP cell shells, it becomes extremely deadly. Never stop moving, not even to kill infantry. You're sneaking around bases looking for unsuspecting armor to gank and finding their weak spots. The fire suppression helps you stay alive a bit longer. You can also sell a vanguard, it's very easy. And if they pop their shield, a nice little tip that many people not, don't know about the shield is it only gives them a 2,000 health bonus for about 6 seconds. The Vulcan can shred through that faster than 6 seconds. Usually takes about 3, maybe 4 if you're way up close to them. This build works amazing with prowlers running it together. You will just destroy stuff. Due to your high speed, if you're ever in danger, you can run away, hide, and repair. Since having stealth, they won't be able to see you where you went. Next, Racer allows you to climb hills very easily so you can flank them in their spots they never expect you to come from. The build is extremely fun, and if you hate the whole camping far away style, then please give this a try. Very few people run this build on console, and more need to do it. Anything you can do to add to the funness is put claymores on the power, so if infantry get close, then they die from the blast. Now, obviously, we didn't think about doing that, but it's quite fun.